Hi guys, today we're going to be doing a rose tattoo design with shading and two-tone henna and the shading technique we're going to be using is a dotting technique that I came across when I did fine art which was before the age of 13 because then I moved on to graphic design. Actually I think it was when I was 14. Okay, it was when I began my GCSEs but anyway, moving on. And just so you guys know, my voice is on the verge of breaking right now, which is why it might sound a little bit different, but hopefully I'll make it through this recording just fine. So now we're moving on to drawing our first three circles, and the first thing I'm going to say to you is that if you have trouble drawing circles, then put a dot at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock, and then connect those dots to make your perfect circle. And the second thing I'm going to say is that the gap between each circle is very important in this design because each circle needs to stand out in its own right. And therefore try and make sure that the gap between each circle is around two to three millimeters wide. My advice for drawing the roses is to sketch out the design first by putting light pressure on your henna cone. And this may or may not be easy depending on the henna paste that you're using. I'm using Rajasthani, which makes it incredibly easy to sketch things out. Once you sketch out the design, you can go back over it with henna again. And you could have also done this when you were drawing the circles. So sketch out the circle very faintly and then go back over it with a thicker line. With the four mini circles that I've just drawn out, very importantly, they need to be placed at 12 and 6 o'clock and 9 and 3 o'clock. So I'm putting dots around the four mini circles and then afterwards I'm going to put dots around the large outer circle in the middle of my hand as well. And I'm going to make sure that the dots are perfectly separated between each other by putting a dot directly in the center of the line and then putting the dots on either side of, the, of this center dot. I'm now going to draw two circles on either side of the circle in the centre of the hand and importantly these two circles have got to be smaller than the circle in the centre but of equal size to each other. Rajasthani henna powder creates a really stringy paste so it's pretty difficult for me to just squeeze out a thick line. So the method that I'm using to create a thick line is to draw two thin lines and then to fill in the centre to create a thicker line. If you have a nice creamy paste then it's pretty easy to just squeeze out a thicker line without having to do this. In hindsight, if I was actually doing this design again, I would make the two roses in inside the two outer circles much smaller because once the paste comes off, it's actually difficult to see what is inside the circles. But if they were smaller, it would have been much more obvious that they are roses. In order to get the roses accurate in this design, by the way, you need the hole at the end of your cone to be very small because the detail in the roses are fine and it's easy to squeeze too much henna out and ruin the roses. Again, I would make this row smaller than what I'm actually doing right now. I'm now outlining the design and the gap between the main design and the outline is about 6mm and we need this gap to be there because we need each part of the design to stand out in its own right and if the gap wasn't there or if it was smaller than what it should be then you'll end up finding that each part of the design almost melts into the other and it makes it hard to see from a distance. On the left side don't draw out the third swirl that I sketched in because that's actually a mistake and in a moment you'll see how it's supposed to look. You'll notice that this design has symmetry and it requires a lot of accuracy as a result and the way that I'm trying to get it as accurate as I possibly can is by drawing one side of the design in and then using it as a marker to dot in where certain points should appear on the other side and then sketching out the design. I'm now going to do the same thing on the other side. See? A lot of symmetry. Unfortunately, my camera angle wasn't very good when I was taping the bottom right hand side of the design, so I skipped that in the video. However, there are many moments where you can actually catch glimpses of what that part of the design looked like, so you can just copy it from there. In the center design that I'm doing right now, I put a thin line underneath a thick line and it might not seem that way, but it makes a huge difference to the design. So make sure you don't miss that out. And we're just going to continue outlining the design and then filling it in. The largest dot here is the one in the center, by the way, and they get smaller as they go down. And 
And we're finally at the final part of the design before we move on to toning and shading. And how big you do this part of the design really depends on how much of a gap you've left. Ideally, you want the gap between this final design and the swirls on the outside to be maybe about two to three millimeters, because again, you want this part of the design to stand out against the swirls. A little tip, always keep a Q-tip handy because if you make a mistake, it is pretty much a lifesaver. And here's what the design looks like so far. I personally think that this design definitely needs two-tone henna and shading to really bring it to life because it looks a little bit plain to me right now. Okay, now for the two-tone henna. The basic technique we're going to use is putting dollops of henna in and then using a wet paintbrush to spread it around. And if you want the stain of the two-tone henna to be darker, then you just keep adding dollops of henna in and spreading it around. For this design we want the roses to be lighter than the background so we're going to add more henna into the background. And in terms of where we're putting the two-tone henna in the roses, imagine on a real rose where the shadows will fall, that's really where we're colouring in. And in terms of our toning we're going to be putting a dollop of henna and then dabbing our cone into that henna and lightly dotting it out until we create a gradient. I'm not going to lie, this takes patience. Remember when I mentioned that in hindsight I would have made the two outer roses smaller? Well, there's another reason for that. You can see that to create a gradient I need quite a bit of room and when I try to create the gradient with the toning on the two outer roses you can see that it didn't really work out too well. So if I were you I would make the roses smaller and it will make your gradient look much better. Another tip, if you accidentally put too much water in, just use your Q-tip to soak it back up again. And here's the final look, and just in time, because I don't think I can drink any more water to keep my voice going. Thank you very much for watching and if you have any suggestions on how I can improve or anything that you would like to see me do in the future then please leave a comment below. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss any of my videos in the future then please subscribe to my channel and if you want to see another one of my videos then please click on the link available on the screen right now.